Welcome back everyone to my second Let's Play of Final Fantasy 1 for the Nintendo Entertainment System played on the Wii Virtual Console. Last episode we had just uh, finished up the Mirage Tower and ended up in the Sky Castle, or the Floating Castle depending on the translation you're using. So I'll probably use both uh, interchangeably. So, But uh, right here we have a whole bunch of treasure that we're going to have to get. But most importantly, we're going to have to find Tiamat, the fourth and final fiend, the fiend of the wind. So, uh, we run into uh, quite a few new enemies here, including this Grey Naga right here. Uh, we also have blocked off the air there, but uh, the air is an interesting uh, elemental. It's one of the few elementals you can actually run from, because it's uh, never a trap tile. We had earth trap tiles in the earth cave, we had fire trap tiles in the Gogu volcano, and then there was water trap tiles in the sea shrine. Uh, the airs are just uh, enemies that are just random encounters around here. So, hey, we ran into that same group uh, right here, so... Yep. Later on, the airs will be in another dungeon, so they're one of the few enemies you can uh, uh, run away from, so it's a way to uh, save some hit points. So, but we're just gonna wander around here, take out enemies as we go. So, we're uh, pretty powerful because you gained all uh, those uh, four levels basically uh, hunting down the, uh, the T Rex in the last episode, so we should be able to handle all the enemies here. Uh, pretty easily, so yeah, enemies are starting to give a lot of good experience. So, I don't think there's any trap tiles actually in the floating guy castle here. So, I try to walk around all the chests and uh, see if I can spawn any, but I don't think I do. So, getting a lot of money, but that's pretty useless at this point. We've already maxed out all our consumables, uh, so really nothing to spend money on. The remaining equipment that we need, uh, we're gonna pick up uh, in treasure chests. Uh, in this, uh, area. So. Uh, new enemy here, the Green Medusas. Usually they come in pretty big packs. I'm surprised this one, uh, is wandering around solo. She must have got, uh, separated from her sisters. So. Weak against fire, so that, uh, you don't have a lot of hit points, so, uh, depending on how well your, uh, mage staff rolls, you might be able to take them out pretty easily, so. I got the Bane Sword there. Uh, that casts a poison cloud on all enemies, uh, instant uh, death to them. Uh, one of the interesting things is Tiamat, uh, she is actually weak to Bane. Uh, it's still a low chance that uh, it'll work on her, but uh, it's not the 1 in 256 chance that uh, most other boss monsters have against uh, to resist the Bane spell. So yeah, Tiamat, you can uh, Bane her, or you can Brack her, which like turns her into stone. So she's susceptible to those two uh, status effects. So, useless money. And a heal helmet. Uh, like I said, second best helmet in the game. The Only the op opal uh, helmet gives more uh, physical defense. The heal helmet, though. Well, uh, we'll just throw it on, uh, on uh, bees there. So, just to give him something to wear for now. Uh, he's going to want to get that... Uh, the third ribbon, we'll get that on the next floor. But heal helmet is tied with the silver helmet in terms of defensive power. But the heal helmet has that special uh, ability cast the heal spell for free when used as an item in battle. So it's like the heal staff, but heal staff's a little better because just because it takes up a weapon slot rather than an armor slot. So, well, uh, we ran into bad men in the Mirage Tower. Well, here's their worst counterpart to the evil man. So, they don't have a lot of hit points, so we can pretty much take them out pretty, pretty easily. Uh, they only have, a, like I said, a 25% chance to use uh, Expert, uh, and then Nuke, and then Blind. Uh, Nuke is that bad spell. Uh, that's the one that can do up to 400 uh, damage max. Eventually, there's going to be a boss, then uh, their first spell that they use is Nuke. Uh, so that's why we want to get that 400 hit point threshold for all our characters, so that even if Nuke rolls the... When we fight that boss, uh, if we if Nuke rolls its max damage, 400, all our characters will survive. Because this team just has no way to revive anyone who's knocked out. Uh, so, they have to always just go back to the clinic. So, or if you had a white wizard, they gain the life and the life 2 spell. So, but, uh, we're here on the second floor, get some more uh, treasures. Still, for helmet, we'll just end up tossing that. Yeah, a lot of armor we're just gonna get here, we're just gonna toss, uh, just because we need to free up spaces uh, for stuff. Yeah, we're all maxed out on armor, so 
throw out the silver helmet, just throw out the heel helmet. Uh, we'll be getting the ribbon on this floor. The floating castle isn't all that big. Uh, I'm gonna go through a second time uh, through the floating castle. And you notice just how quickly I get through it. Uh, straight down from the teleporter that we enter this floor on, uh, straight down from there is the teleporter to the next floor. Uh, so if you're just skipping all the treasure, you can get through this real quick, but like I said, there's a lot of treasure that we want to get, and besides, I do the 100% playthrough, so I'm going to open up all the treasure chests, and this allows me to also farm uh, for enemies, too. There's quite a few uh, new enemies in this area, uh, so one of the new enemies that we hopefully we don't run into um, is the optional super boss, Warmech. Um, he appears on the fifth floor. Uh, he is not a 1 in 64 chance. People uh, kind of have that opinion that he's a 1 in 64 because the uh, Nintendo Power Banner uh, contest uh, to, you know, find Warmech. Uh, they were saying that, like, he's a 1 in 64, but he's actually a 3 in 64. The 1 in 64 on that floor is the fighter. And they kind of look like uh, Astos, the pound swip of Astos, the dog elf. Well, B's got all his final equipment there. Uh, all we need now is uh, to get the white shirt, uh, and we can get that on this floor. Uh, in the room actually to the south there, we'll be getting the white shirt. The, that's the shirt room down there. Uh, there's the black shirt and the white shirt. Uh, they both protect against some statuses. I think white does uh, protect against uh, death, and black prevents against like time magic. Should have picked up the black shirt first, but I read my map wrong. Uh, black shirt uh, is a little worse because uh, um, all it does is it casts Ice Two when using the battle. The white shirt though uh, casts Invis Two, which makes it uh, all your characters harder to hit, uh, and you can stack it multiple times. Uh, so uh, Nick, because he, Nichols, because he's in the back row, only has that one in eight chance of being targeted. Uh, he can afford to not have a shield. Uh, take that little defensive hit, uh, and then just pump up the white shirt uh, to help raise the evade of everybody in the party. So be, uh, Nichols will be helping out all his, his brothers. So and hey, we finally got the adamant. We learned about the adamant a long, long time ago from uh, Smith, the dwarven Smith. He said, "Hey, if you got adamant, you know, like uh, I can make a really fine sword, my like greatest work." Uh, but you know, he's out of it. So we finally find it, yeah, the, uh, Adamant is, uh, we trade it to Smith, uh, and we get the Excalibur, the second best sword in the game, uh, the best sword in the game is the Masmune, uh, the Masmune can only be, uh, the Masmune can be wielded by anybody, any class, even, un uh, unchanged classes, unpromoted classes, uh, but the Masmune, I mean, the Excalibur can only be used by Knights, which is the upgraded fighter, so, for our final party, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, bees will be using the Masmune and Bird will have the Excalibur. So, and then our two ninjas, they'll be having the, uh, the third best sword in the game, uh, which is a ninja exclusive, the Katanas. There's two Katanas, and we're actually gonna get one of them here, so. Here on the third floor, I made a little detour here. Uh, this room up here has Pro Rings, so I realized that, wait, the Pro Rings up here, so I wanna get this one last. Because uh, that way, any armor I pick up, I can just chuck uh, and then pick up the pro ring. Because that's the only uh, piece of equipment that Nichols is missing right now. Because I threw his pro ring away to uh, pick up the white shirt. Because I picked up the black shirt uh, foolishly first. So, but I guess it doesn't matter. Because even if I picked up the uh, white shirt, uh, the black shirt first and pitched it, uh, I still would have had full inventory. I would have had the pro ring there and I would have had to uh, toss something out. But I didn't mind tossing my pro ring because. I knew up here there'd be another pro ring to get. And I'm gonna have to pitch a pro ring when I get to the final dungeon because there's uh, two pieces of armor there. A pro cape and a pro ring, so pick throw my pro ring out to pick up the pro cape and then grab the other pro ring. So the pro cape is actually uh, even though it's a cape you think it would be a body armor, it's actually a shield. Uh, it functions in the shield slot of your characters. So I kinda think of uh, Count Dooku. Uh, from Star Wars, uh, he had that cape, and apparently in the novels, uh, apparently the cape uh, was made of some lightsaber-proof material, so he can kind of deflect blows with it when he's 
doing his like lightsaber stuff, and swinging around. He can kind of guess if he has to turn his back to an opponent. Uh, which apparently I got uh, watched some videos on uh, of like sword uh, professionals like critiquing sword fights, and that's a big one they always talk about. In a lot of movies, uh, you know, a character will turn their back to their opponent to like a spin attack and they're like you never turn your back to an opponent and, like you can get looks good in the movies but realistically they say it's bad Tiamat is the fiend of wind yeah with all these computer consoles they all say the same thing uh, so I'm not gonna read all of them but uh, these two rooms down here are empty the only reason I'm going into them just to show off kind of like how I do with the Gogu volcano I went to those empty rooms just to show you that they're empty yeah so all these computers they must have uh Microsoft Word or something on pulled up and somebody just typed uh, TM as the Fiend of Wind on it. So maybe they have a notepad, I don't know. So hey, we've got a robot here. What's he say? You can look out over the world from this window. And we will do that on our way back. But we need to grab some treasure over here. And this floor is uh has a bunch of holes in it. I don't know if it's fallen into disrepair or they purposely made it like this. I don't know why they purposely make it like this. I don't know. But like, who knows? Maybe they were trying to build it all and they just ran out of time. But yeah, they give us cloth armor already. Well, cloth armor is like the first armor you can get back in uh, Corneria. I don't know why they're giving it to us here. There's that pro cape. One of two. Uh, the other one's in the final dungeon of the game. We'll toss it. I use it as a shield for like my other party because it's one of the few shields that, uh, well it's actually the, the only shield that the mage type characters can use. So your white mage, your black mage, and your red mage, uh, no your red mage can use bucklers, but like for your red and your, uh, for your white and your black mages, uh, if you want a shield on them, they're going to have to use the pro cape. From this window one can see the entire world. The four forces are flowing together into the center of the four altars, into the Temple of Fiends. That's a little clue as to where we're going to have to go after we restore light to the fourth orb when we defeat Tiamat. And we will do that next episode. No, we'll actually end up doing it here. So, as I said, the, this dungeon isn't too, too, too big. This will be the last floor where we get treasure on. So, uh, after, uh, after it, you know, it's going to be a, kind of a straight shot, so... Now we can equip uh, Nichols with his probing. So hey, everybody's kind of set up. They have their shield in the upper left, or in Nichols' case, the white shirt. Their body armor in the lower left, helmet in the upper right, and then uh, their probings in the lower right. So satisfy the OCD. I'm just checking. Ooh, I just forget that I check things, and the OCD kicks in. I'm like, did I check those treasure chests? Ah! That's terrible. I. <laughs> go to work, I check my lock like five or six times. I take medicine for it, but sometimes it still doesn't help. So, oh, right, we got a soft potion. I think I already stocked up on them, so it ain't really matter, eh? More useless money. And we get the first katana. The other katana's in the last dungeon. We are going to give that katana to uh, Nichols, and uh, then eventually... Uh, they will pass down uh, other swords then to, to chip. So, uh, Bode will get Excalibur, and then uh, the, the Sun Sword will transfer down to Bees, and then Bees will transfer his uh, defense sword then to uh, chip. So it has, uh, looks like 11 more attack power than the Cat Claw. It has the same hit percentage, so... Uh, yeah, one more level, uh, Thieves will, uh, or Ninjas, they were Thieves at the beginning of the game, or Ninjas will get another uh, attack. Because they get two per level, and uh, they're at 94. So this is an interesting room. Uh, the teleporter is uh, either go two down and two right, or up to left two uh, in, in any combination uh, to get to the next teleporter. So you can go up one, left one, up one, left one, or down one, right one, down one, right one. Or just down to right to, you know, up to left to. Uh, but the room wraps around, sort of like how the sea shrine wrapped around and how the world wraps around. Uh, but that'll get you to the teleporter to the fifth and final floor. So this time I'm just going down and right. Next time I come through the floating castle, I will go uh, right and, I mean, uh, 
left and up. So yeah, after two intersections, we will get to the teleporter. We hop on in, and we're taken up to the fifth and final floor, which is just one big long bridge. Uh, they call this the War Mech Bridge because War Mech can only be found uh, on this floor. So, and the bridge comprises like 80% of the floor. It's just the teleporter, the bridge, and then the final room where Tegan that is. So most likely if you do run into enemies, that they're going to be on the bridge. So the one of the reasons that I'm healing all my characters up here is because just in case I run into War Mech, like I said, it's a slim possibility, but you know, hey, you know, odds can happen, you know, low odds can happen. So we want to get above that 400 hit points because War Mech, uh, he's a nuclear powered machine, he can use the nuke spell. So we want to be able to make sure that our characters can survive if he decides. War Mech has like, a, I think, a 90% chance uh, to uh, preemptively strike you. Uh, so most likely he's going to go first. Uh, and that could be real disastrous if he goes first, uses nuke, and then attacks you again and goes before all your characters and casts nuke again. So your best defense is, you know, the ribbons, uh, because nuke is kind of like a fire elemental. So to protect against that. They have a white wizard throw up the A-fire. We didn't run into War Mech, but we ran into the Fiend here. Lightning erupts on the Fiend's ball. So you have come this far. I, team at the Fiend of the Wind, will now put an end to your adventure. Uh-oh, and she is the last Fiend. And she is a four-headed dragon, so she has four attacks. Uh, as you can see, she is weak against Brack and Brain. Uh, back, Brack and Bane. Tongue twister there. Uh, but we're gonna first start, uh, because it's a still a low chance that Bane will actually work. We're gonna just worry about maybe trying to take uh, her out with damage. So we're going to fast boat and bees. Uh, if you're too weak, uh, one of the things you could have done is you could have left here, got the Excalibur, that would have helped you out a little bit. But uh, like I said, we had those levels, so I'm pretty confident we'll be able to take care of it. So Chip will use the Bane Sword, uh, hopefully to try to see if uh, we can break through the resistance. Uh, Nichols will just add a little bit of uh, damage there. Once we fast our characters, unfortunately fast doesn't stack, so you only cast it once on each character and, you know, hope they get their critical hits there, so. Yeah, Boat and Bees will just keep on uh, pounding away and Chip will uh, keep using that Bane Sword. So, Nick will just add a little bit of help here and there, so. He's not getting too many criticals, unfortunately, so. Although the Katana should have a pretty high critical hit rate uh, because they're based on the, uh, the table. And so it's like, you know, Mazamoon is highest, then Excalibur, and then you'd have the Katana. So you have the third highest crit rate in the game. Uh, but just like I say, he's not getting too lucky. Maybe because, like I say, uh, we're not getting too many hits. So, but hey, we took out Tiamat. And that is the step on the altar here. Clear out the last orb. And now we have successfully saved the world. See, all our orbs are happy, but, uh, yeah, what do we, uh, what do we do now? Well, obviously we're gonna save our game first. But what do our heroes, uh, do now that they've, uh, restored all the orbs? Well, let's head back to Crescent Lake in our next episode to find out if the sages have any more advice for us. Take care, see you then. Bye!